Today's segment of Sound Balming is brought to you by Jimmy and Mary's Authentic Body Care. I cannot express to you how much we love, love, love their products. Although we use them all year, as the weather gets colder, we need these products even more. The dreaded drop in temperature, the dryness, the itchiness, and the unnecessary flakiness is inevitable. Shea Butter from Jimmy and Mary's Authentic Body Care is the only thing that works for my skin and hair needs. Not only do these products cure my dry skin, the whipped butter goes on smoothly and doesn't leave that uncomfortably thick, sticky residue. Bonus? It smells absolutely amazing. There are so many different scents to choose from too. Not only do they carry skincare products, there are products for authentic living, face, shower, hair and beard, spritzers and perfumes, and bath products. Let me tell you, we cannot even keep the stuff in the studio. The entire production team, as well as all our children, use Jimmy and Mary's product. Jimmy and Mary's take pride in creating quality, handcrafted products from simple ingredients for the entire family. Their products are made for all skin types and are 100% handmade, 100% vegan, and 100% cruelty free. Skin care is important. Moisture is key and keeping our skin and hair hydrated is essential. I cannot emphasize how much we trust Jimmy and Mary's for all of our skin care needs. Hurry on up to JimmyandMary's.com and check out their products. Did I mention service is fast and efficient too? Don't forget to mention that you heard about Jimmy and Mary's authentic skin care on Sound Balmy. Use the discount code soundbalm20 to get 15% off. That's soundbalm20 for 15% off at Jimmy and Mary's Authentic Skin Care. Hey everybody, welcome to Sound Bombing. I created this show for people who want to experience a radical, life-changing journey through the sounds of my diverse guests. I hope that each sound you hear on this show will strengthen your faith, encourage your dreams, and challenge you to awaken the greatness within you. Drop the bomb. Drop the bomb. We're going to drop the bomb. Drop the bomb. We're going to drop the bomb. Drop the bomb. We're going to drop the bomb. Drop the bomb. This is a journey into sound. A journey which along the way will bring to you new color, new dimension, new values. And a new experience. Ladies and gentlemen, the star of the show, Lamar Darnell Shields. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever the time of the day it is, you are hanging out with me and welcome to the show. I'm your host, Dr. Lamar Garnio Shields, the creator of Sound Bombing. And my goal with this show is to introduce you to people with ideas that will help you unlock your full potential, like today's guest, Natalie Estelle. Now, before I bring up Natalie, you know, I like to start out with a couple of questions and please excuse my voice. I have been speaking all week. And so I'm hoping that my voice will clear up. And believe me, I take all the type of remedies for my voice and for my body. But for whatever reason, uh, when we plugged in the mic, it just went in a different direction. But if you don't know, I am a father, uh, a father of three. And I'm going to talk about that later on. But, you know, I always like to start out with a question. And today I have several questions, Sound Bombers. Did you know that today 1,400 babies will be born too early? What causes babies to be born early? How does prematurity affect babies and their families? Well, as a preemie father, I've had the opportunity to be relatively vocal about our family's experience in the NICU and have been asked these questions so many times. But there are so many other people other than myself, who are bringing an awareness to this conversation. And since I'm not a mother or an expert on this topic, I decided to invite my good friend, Natalie Estelle, who I've not seen in a very long time, but I've seen her virtually and she's doing some amazing things. Natalie is the author of 52 self-care tips for 
NICU moms, and she's here to discuss the common questions about prematurity. You see, while serving as a director of marketing and communications for a woman-owned, top-rated catering company in Baltimore, Natalie was fortunate to have three children. Her first child was stillborn. The second was a micro preemie born early and weighing less than two pounds. And the last born full term, all within two years. Naturally, such an experience reshaped her life, causing her to refocus her efforts, both personally and professionally. Now, I'm excited to have my friend in the building because we go so far back. Natalie is an amazing designer. She designed posters. She designed so many things that my partner, David, and I were doing and all the other people were doing. And then she decided that she wanted to get married. <laughs> and my man from Chicago put it on her. And they had some children. And now she's traveling all over the country talking and lecturing about something that's near and dear to her heart. And so I'm so excited, Natalie, to, inv to invite you and join me in the bomb shelter. Sister, how are you doing? You look amazing. Thank you. I'm well. I'm so happy to see you. It's been so long since I think we've known each other since 1999. We're aging wow. a little bit, but it's been a while. It's been a while. 1999. Shout out to Prince who made that song. <laughs> 19. We go way back. It is it is an honor to hang out with you. You always fly. Look at you. Yeah. Now that I get this right, you 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 growing the locks back again. Natalie's had the fly locks. locks. <laughs> always yeah. got the fly frames. Always. So Natalie is showing you for all those mothers out there, young and old, you, you don't have to look like a mother. Let me just say that again. <laughs> you don't have to look like a mother and you know who I'm talking to. So Natalie, let's just do a quick mental health check. And I always like to check in with individuals to see how they're doing. How are you doing? How's the family? And how are those babies? Thank you for asking. So we're, we're doing well. We're adjusting. Um, so I have my, they're now five and six. Can't believe it. Um, my daughter's six, my son is five. Um, we're adjusting to life as teaching at home. And my full time, I'm an art teacher actually for Baltimore City Public Schools. So I'm teaching my classes as well as my kids at the same time. And then my husband is usually in this office locked down <laughs> with his job. So it's, a, it's an interesting adjustment, but we're making it happen. Well, so, shout out to Hey, thank you for, for joining me. Art teacher, I mean, it's in your blood. You teacher, artist, so I'm sure those kids are excited. Uh, sometimes you, I'm sure you're pushing them, challenging, and you see some of the, the struggles that many teachers go through working with kids. And I could not imagine being in the virtual space teaching. I am doing my, walk, my work and my talks virtually. But shout out to all the mothers out there. Shout out to all the mothers. Uh, we're celebrating uh, our mothers for mothers all over the globe. We're celebrating you all. And you can see I'm rocking my black father because I am a, a father. Uh, but prior to um, you being a, a, a mother, I was, I am a dad. Think about it. Three children, 19, 17, and 14 years old. And so I know the joys of having children were not, you know, not birthing them myself, but also, <laughs> also know the struggles and the excitement of that. So, Natalie, you know, talk to me about just how did you feel when you first found out that you were pregnant? What was that like? So it was an, it was an amazing feeling. So my husband and I were together for 15 years before we even found out we were pregnant. 15 years. Um, so when we found out, we were so excited. Um, couldn't wait to tell our families. And you know me, I'm creative, so I had to make sure I announced it to our families very creatively. It wouldn't be you if you didn't do all of that. I, I couldn't just say, hey, we're pregnant. That didn't work. Like I have to be extra with it. And so I put everything together. We told them at Thanksgiving, everybody was visiting for Thanksgiving. And we were just so excited. We were overwhelmed, overjoyed because it took so long for us to finally get pregnant. So once we did, um, I, I did everything right by the book. I mean, I was a little older. so. Um, I was just on the cusp of high risk. Um, I believe 36 ish is when you become high risk and I was 35. So I was right on the cusp. Um, so everything I did by the book and I, I remember the day exactly. Um, we were watching the all-star game on the couch. I remember what I was wearing that day and everything. And um, I just started having cramps and what's going on. So my husband, he's very analytical. 
he's an engineer by trade. So he's always like, do this, do this, do this. I'm like, I'm okay. He said, nope, call the doctor. Called the doctor. They said, come in, let's just check you out. And literally on the way there in my new car, my water broke in the middle of my car. And I was just, it was, it was, it was kind of confusion, a lot of confusion there because I know it was really early, but we went in and um, went through the whole process and they told me that I had to have um, my son, which was the first time we found out it was a boy. Um, I had to have him, even though he wasn't going to make it. So that was, that part was hard. Um, and it took me a couple of times to get over it. Um, Cause I thought I was broken. I literally said I'm broken. Like, first of all, it took 15 years. And then we finally got here and then this is what happens. Like what's going on, what's wrong? Um, but, but we pushed through, we pushed through and we had um, a lot of people praying for us. So that was very, very helpful in that whole process. So with that first process of the first child, what are some, what are some lessons that you learned from that process? And what are some tools that you use to get you through? I heard you say you have people praying for you, people encouraging you all, but what are some lessons that you learn and what are some tools that you probably that you can share with my listeners out there for those who do who lose a baby in that process? Um, honestly, I say talk about it. Uh, uh, the hard part, I think, about this whole process is when people actually go through hard things, they don't talk. About it. And just talking about it helps other people. And I it, it, was, it took me a minute to get to that point. Don't, don't get me wrong. It took me a minute to get there. But um, I remember going back to work and I would see people that I didn't see for a while. And they're like, oh, so how's the baby? And I'm like, like, I immediately broke home because nobody told me. I obviously didn't know that I had a silver and so forth. Um, <clears throat> but it took me a little bit to get through it. I, I talked to people and that's when you find out other people went through it, too. The people, again, they don't talk about it. It's not something you, I guess, share with other people about. but. Talking about it with others definitely helps me. It helps me get um, support from friends. I had people coming over unannounced, which is crazy because I don't like people talking unannounced in my house. But so nothing has, <laughs> nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. But like they would bring flowers and plants to kind of cheer me up and just to sit and talk with me. And that was great. And that really helped me get through that. And obviously, a um, uh, husband helped me with that because he, that was in February that he came and I was pregnant almost immediately and had our premature daughter that same year. I love my Chicago brothers. We yeah. don't mess around. Listen, no. I'm, I'm going to support you, wife. I'm going to call to you, but we're about to get back in it <laughs> one more time. Be very clear. Uh, sure. We're going to get back in it. Um, so thank you for sharing that. I, I'm sure just having that conversation uh, can be for most people traumatic to hear but again, I love the fact that you said that you talked about it, you opened up. And what's interesting, Natalie, about most things in life, we feel like we're the only ones going through this. We feel like we're the only ones that's going through this. And then when we open up and share, so many people, women and men, have gone through this. Families have actually gone, gone through this. And so I, I thank you for sharing that part. Then you go to round two. And then you say, we're going to do it one more time. Talk to me about that process. And then what were your first thoughts when you saw your second child? So round two comes along. And like I said, we, we had her the same year that we had the stillborn. So with her, my doctor, um, surprisingly, and you have to be a, an advocate for yourself too with your doctors. Like you, you have to, because um, a lot of times, I don't know if they just don't think you need it, but I had to have a surplage. And I had to take progesterone shots. I didn't find that out till we almost lost her. So 20 weeks seems to be my number. I don't know what it is about 20, but we lost my, my son at 20 weeks. 20 weeks I was in for my um, checkup. And you know, when you're in there and you're getting um, the doctor to check on you and then like, let me be right, the nurse says, let me, I'll be right back. You know, that kind of is like, well, okay, is everything okay? Like, what's up? She came back with the doctor. The doctor said, um, we have to give you, have an emergency surclage right now. So they literally took me downstairs um, and I had a surclage put in. And that's basically that um, closed my cervix to help let the baby stay in. So I've got 20 weeks. I had to go on bed rest for as long as I could. <sighs> Homegirl, <laughs> she was ready. Five weeks. I only lasted five weeks on bed rest. 
I literally was living in my living room. We moved our guest um, guest bedroom mattress to the living room floor because I couldn't use steps. So I literally, I literally lived in our living room for a month while working. I was still working <laughs> on the bed, literally laying down working. And um, so five weeks it lasted. Again, I had slight cramps. My husband's like, let's just go in and get it checked out. Um, went in, they said, yep, she's coming early, be ready. Um, I have to have magnesium and shout out to all the moms who know about magnesium. It's something else. It's I take, I, I encourage anybody to take, I just took my magnesium pills today, every morning. So I'm, 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 I'm glad that you're dropping some jewels right now throughout the process. Magnesium yes. is amazing. It's a great healing, uh, you know, mineral for your body. So thank you for saying that. Of course. And, and so we had the magnesium. I had to take a couple other shots. I'm not exactly sure what those were, but it was to help um, kind of quickly get her organs and stuff to grow because they knew she was coming out early. Um, they said, Mrs. Estelle, we need 48 hours. So if you can, if you can hold out for 48 hours, you'll be good to go. She'll be good. So she held out for 72. Thank you, Jesus. She, she, she held out an extra day. And so um, I literally was in the high risk part of the um, labor and delivery department. My stomach again started bothering me. It was time. They didn't even have time to get the surclage out. They had to rush to get the surclage out. And she came out crying which right there for me and my husband was everything. Cause we weren't sure, you know, she's 25 weeks and three days. And, and, and most people know 40 weeks. So imagine 25 weeks, 40 weeks. So 25 weeks, we didn't know what to expect. But she came out crying and then I knew I was, everything was going to be okay. Um, she weighed one pound, 15 ounces when she was born. Um, and I, and I wasn't worried about that necessarily. I just wanted to make sure she was okay. And hearing her cry was, was enough for me. So they whisked their way to the NICU. And um, I went to see her later that day. And, and, and we've been inseparable. Fell in love. <laughs> I, you know, it, 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 the reason why I was so excited to bring you on, because I don't know if you remember our story of our first child, Hadiah, who pronounces Hadiah. I remember walking downstairs, you know, Michelle comes home, you know, comes home from the hospital. Well, you know, she goes in, I guess, preterm labor. We come home. I go downstairs. We're in the house and I come back and I hear a baby upstairs crying and Hadiah falls out in her mom's pajamas. And so I know the struggles of, a, of having a preemie. Hadiah was not that small, but she, I mean, as small as your child, but she was very, she was preemie. She was small. Right? You can look at it now. Very, very small. A uh, very small frame. She came out really, really early and we did everything uh, that we thought we were supposed to do. So, you know, as a father watching that happen, going downstairs to get something to drink for her, coming back and hearing a baby crying, stuck in her pajamas, then having having the call. You know, what was cool. The people that were the coolest was we walked down the street. We got our neighbor. No, my friend Natalie walked down to get our neighbor. I, Natalie was I mean, not Natalie. Um, I'm calling you Nat uh, Valerie was losing and Valerie's running down the street. The guy's cutting the grass. He he's an EMT worker. He comes down so calm and so easy. He says, Darnell, uh, could you just get a shoestring? And you know what I'm doing. And my mat, my mind, my, my man thinking, I'm trying to figure out which shoestring <laughs> should I go the Adidas to the Nike? Which one? And you know, the, the rest is history. And so we do have that in common of, of having a child early and then having a, to go to the NICU and then, you know, all those things uh that actually that actually transpired, but nothing, nothing like yours, I want to go back to something that you said, because as we're talking about all of this stuff that's taking place, Natalie, in the world from Black Lives Matter to COVID uh, to uh, men and men and women being shot by police to people losing their job. One of the things is something that you said I want to elevate. You said that I needed to advocate for myself and I want to pause right there, put on the emergency brakes and I want to and I want to I want to put the hazard lights on. What I'm discovering and what I'm discovering in many of my talks and my research, even before bringing you on, that many black women are saying that, that they're not getting the health care that they should. Now, these are educated women like you. One woman I saw, uh, you know, she's an educator, has a master's in education. Um, she uh, she basically had a heart attack inside of her doctor's office. But she said if she did not have an advocate with her to fight for her then they would have just pushed her to the side. 
did you feel at, at any moment in your life um, going through the process that you've gone through with any of your children that you needed somebody to advocate for you? And did you feel as a woman of color that you weren't getting the support that you needed? So I am huge on adv- being ad- advocates, obviously. So my first doctor did not, to me, with my daughter, actually, my first doctor was my daughter. She, I couldn't understand when I looked back, why didn't she have me at the beginning get the surclage and start taking the progesterone shots? Because I had just lost a baby that same year. Like that didn't make sense to me. So I had switched. I switched doctors midway through the, the pregnancy um, because I, she wasn't the one for me. So I don't have a problem with switching whatever I need to do to make sure it's better for me and my family. So I definitely am huge on being an advocate for myself. I was an advocate for my daughter when she was in the NICU. Um, and, and, and for all NICU moms, you have to be a dad. You have to be an advocate for your kid. Um, there were times when she, when Andrea came out, she did not have, she didn't need oxygen. Um, but she did have a CPAP in her nose to help her. Probably two or three weeks after she was born, she was pushing that thing out. Like, get this off of me. And so I was telling the doctors, like, just if she doesn't want it, she obviously doesn't need it. She can breathe on her own. So the nurses are fighting me. No, no, no. She has to have it. So we talked to the head neonatologist and he said, you know what? Listen to mom. Listen to baby. If she doesn't need it, she's pushing it off. Let her try the, the room air. And she did it with no problems. Like advocate for your kids. <laughs> advocate for yourself because you know yourself better you know your kids so i advocate like so i appreciate you saying that so the (laughs) women that i saw the story on it was my it might have been like a nightline daytime whatever those shows but these women always said having if if it's not your partner or your husband uh but having someone with you uh in those spaces uh to do that so natalie what would you say was the most memorable part of your nick nick you journey um Probably, I have two that are neck and neck. So one of my favorite parts were meeting other NICU moms. So, um, and it's hard because you don't, you don't know what to say, but you kind of know they're in the same position that you are in. Um, I was there twice a day. I would go on my lunch break to visit her and do her cares. So I would help change her, check her temperature and all that stuff. And then in the evenings, my husband and I would go back and skin to skin and read to her and just spend time with her. That was one important time. And then again, meeting the other moms and actually forming relationships with the neonatologist, the respiratory therapist, like treating those people because they're taking care of your kid. And let me tell you, that's the most amazing unit. If you've never seen a NICU unit, they it's like a NASA ship or something. They got everything (laughs) in there everything that you can that you can think of and some places are better than others and we'll talk about that but you just brought up something and me i forgot that we had to leave hadaya there yeah you know we so you just carried this child in your womb and as and as men we somewhat see it different and i remember you know michelle not wanting to leave and i couldn't really understand like I, they got it but as a as a mother can you talk about what that was like you you just had this you just lost the, the first child you just had another one and they're saying to you you got to leave. Talk about what that process was like. And then talk about some of the things that, that you needed for yourself that really helped you get over that time. So, and that's the thing. If you, if you think about it, when you are watching television or um, if you had a previous baby or, you know, your friends, they have their babies in their home with them in two, three days. So this is our, our second baby. Um, and having her and then having to go home, it's very difficult because I just assumed, you know, when I was pregnant that, oh, we're gonna have a baby, she'll be home in two, three days, but we weren't ready. We didn't have her nursery set up. We have nothing because she came so early. So um, I would say I, I felt sad <laughs> because I wanted to bring her home, um, but, at the same time, I was happy that she was in the place where she was um, because I knew those people would take good care of her. Like I would call all, if I woke up in the middle of the night, I would call, how's she doing? 
you know, does she have any Brady's? And um, meaning, did she stop breathing? Like I, I would call on her or call in the hospital all the time because I was worried. Um, we went nine weeks, nine weeks of seeing her twice a day. The only time I didn't go was ice. I don't, I love her, but I don't do ice. <laughs> And even though I'm says okay, the woman from Wisconsin then by way of Louisiana, <laughs> by okay, as a woman who used to ice skate for a living, come on, you could have put those dogs now. I'm about to push back on you. my baby in that hospital, you could have put those dog on ice skates on and ice skated your behind, made it up 695. <laughs> but like, I I don't drive her ice, and so I was like, oh, I'll call extra that day that there was, was um ice storms, but. Um, it was it was really hard, but I just made sure I constantly checked in, constantly checked in. So what has being a preemie mom, a preemie parent taught you? Um, it definitely taught me patience. Because um, I'm, I'm going to be honest, I did not have patience before that. Um, but it has taught me patience. I've learned to um, accept what happens. I, I can't, you can't plan. You never know what's going to happen. And um, I've just learned to... I've just learned to accept it how how it is. Like I, I was nervous, um, and then going to have another baby right afterwards. Like I was completely, it was it was a lot of nerves, but we we made it through. And mm-hmm. constant prayers, um, and then the awesome support that I have from my parents, my mother in law, um, my husband. Like it was just friends. Everybody consistently praying for us and and helping us get through it. Because two in one year is a lot. But when we moved on to have three and two, whew, that it was a lot. But the, the great thing, and let me honestly say this, my husband, he would consistently ask for random prayers. And I say that a lot. Um, we, I don't know, like we'll be driving down the street, you know, the people that stand at the corners that try to get money to help the animals or help feed whoever. Like these people would stop us as we're driving, stopping at the light. And my husband was like, tell them the story. And they would literally stop traffic and pray, like right there. Like he he was asking for prayers from every and anybody. And I truly believe that helped us to help her get through that process. Because nine weeks is just, it's a lot. And we're thankful. We're blessed. Because I know people that were on um, my board when I had my nonprofit organization. They had their kids in the NICU for nine months or six months, a year. Like, so... Nine weeks is nothing compared to what they went through, but it was a lot for us, but we made it through, through prayer. So now you are an artist turned advocate and you have coined yourself as the NICU mom self-care coach and consultant. What exactly does that mean? And then what does that entail? And then I want you to talk about this new book that you wrote and what should people expect from reading this book? So I, I coined myself the NICU mom self-care coaching consultant because that's exactly what I did. And I wish I had somebody like that when I was in the hospital. So I used to have a nonprofit organization called Premium Moms Rock. And we would go into hospital NICUs and feed the moms healthy meals and dads if they were there. Um, healthy meals, we would do therapeutic crafts and we would just have parent-to-parent conversations. So we, I always used to say, like, the nurses are great, the doctors are great, the respiratory therapists are wonderful, but they didn't go through it, and I did. So I can tell you everything that you're going to feel and expect, and um, I'm, I'm here for you. I'm, I'm literally here for you. So the reason, the way that came about is I was actually, out of my friends, the first person to have a preemie. I helped my other friend who was the co-founder of the Premium Mom Rock organization. I helped guide her through that whole process of talking to other people in the hospital, talking about insurance, because that's a whole nother <laughs> realm. But I helped her go through that process. And she's like, man, I wish, I wish there were more Natalie's to help us go through this process or help other moms. And that's where the organization came from. And unfortunately, it no longer exists. But I want to carry that on going forward. So unfortunately, COVID came. I can't do in-person meetings, but um, virtual meetings with NICU moms would be great. Um, Just kind of, again, talk through the whole process because I experienced it. So I could tell you what you're going to go through. The surgeries the babies go through when they're there. The um, blood transfusions. I've been there. So I, I feel like I'm great. 
and I can help moms get through that whole process and then tell them how they can take care of themselves while they're there. Um, because if you're not in a good space, then your baby's not going to be in a good space when they come home. So that's where the book came from. So little plug, 52 self-care tips for Nikki moms from a Nikki mom. And um, this book came about because there are things that you need to do for yourself in order to get in a good place. So when the baby does come home, um, you could be the best mom you can be for them. So I know you have 52. Give me maybe your top. Do you have your top five or your top 10 um, that really helped you get over? And you could just share any any of those if you like. OK, so I'm going to do I'm going to do my top three, if you don't mind. Go ahead. Um, so one of the one of the biggest ones, I would say for me, being the creative person that I am, um, number 15, number 15 here. Surrounding, so which may sound crazy, but for me, I wanted to make sure that the baby was in a good space at, at the hospital. So I made signs, <laughs> creative part of me, the artist. I made signs that I would put on her isolate um, that kind of would be interesting for her to look at. I'm not sure if people know, but. Um, but babies in general, putting patterns and stuff for them to look at is extremely important. So I made um, some patterns that I would put on her isolate. I made her name tag. So when people, because um, she did have a roommate in there a couple of times. So I just wanted it to look great. So making that look great was um, important to me. And then my surroundings at home was important to me. So I wanted to make sure my physical space was clear of anything negative. And I wanted to clear the negative people out of my space. Um, so to me, that's extremely important, especially when you're going through the constant visiting back and forth. You just want to make sure everything around you is, is, is good. And I went back to work while she was in the NICU. It made no sense to take, um, take time off with her if she wasn't home yet. So I went back to work, which people think, that's crazy. Like, what happened? You didn't have there was no, it made no sense to take off if she wasn't home. So I waited till she came home to have my um my time with her. But um so surroundings to me is very important. Books for baby. Books for baby, which is number 23. Um for me that's very important because when you go to the NICU and visit them, they say how important it is to read. Um so we read to her every day, every night when we were there. And I think to this day might be the sole reason why she loves to read. She started reading earlier than most um, kids, but she loves to read. Every night, we're, we're still reading a book every night. So the six years that she's been on this earth, she literally reads, reads a book every night, every night. And I think that's extremely important. Um, to the point where actually we, we tried to start a couple of um, libraries in NICU um, to get people to donate books, which I've, I've done that at uh, GBMC, which is where she was born. Um, but starting a library and Nikki's is important. So for people that don't have books or don't remember to bring their books um, to read to their baby, we have some there for them to have. Um, funny one, 35. Listen to a podcast, ah, right? <laughs> when you're driving back and forth to visit them, have your mind on something. Find something that you're interested in listening to. Find something that you're interested in learning about. And so that's why, to me, that was important because you're going to be in the car a lot. You're going to be visiting them back and forth. So find a podcast and listen to it and kind of better yourself in that realm. I, the, to me, these are three. Now, am I honest? On all honestly, these 52 are all important to me. But those are three that I feel like right now is very important too because most people are at home, COVID, and everything. But Get that stuff in order. Get your, your surroundings in order. Get a couple of books. Read some books yourself if you have time. And make sure you listen to a podcast. Those are like the three that I would say right now. Are really well, and we want to we want to encourage you to listen, to keep listening to this podcast. Yeah. As I'm sitting here thinking about you, I thought about you. You actually designed my book. I thought it was 10 steps out of puberty, but it was 101 things every boy of color should know. So as you were going through those steps. I thought about my book that you people love 101 things every boy of color should know. So thank you for designing. Thank you 
uh, for that. Now, I got to I got to push back a little bit. What about the dads? What about the babas? They need self-care, too. What advice would you give to another dad with a baby currently in NICU? So, side plug, I'm working on 52 self-care tips for dads. So, that one's in the works. I love it. (laughs) That one is in the works. Um, But for dads, I would say um, two things that are very important. Um, Support mom. Mom needs to support as, as you know, like we don't know when we're having, like it just preemies is it's hard to explain because you don't know when you're going to have them. You hope you make it to 40 weeks, right? But that doesn't mean that that's necessarily going to happen. So if you have a Nikki baby, support mom do that. My husband was a great support. Anything I needed, even when I was on bed rest before she came, I didn't have to get up for anything except to go to the restroom. Other than that, he would come home from work prepare lunch for me because I could not do those things for myself, which was hard because I'm used to doing those things. So support mom. If she's on bed rest, fix her meals for her, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, Make sure you are there to help her in any aspect that she needs. Um, And then two, take care of yourself. So make sure you are doing the things you want to do. So if mom is you know, taking care of, she's taking a nap or whatever, help with the nursery or do something that you love to do for yourself. Because when the baby comes home, i tell you, <laughs> your time will be with mom and baby. So and this is your first, I would say, definitely get time for yourself, do the things you love and then support mom. Because those things are very, very important. Those are two things. And um, I'll have 52 total. You have 52. Yeah. So you already got us started. <laughs> Yeah. You know, it's interesting listening to you. I think about our firstborn, Hadaya Ayodele Shields. I think about 19 years ago being a being a preemie, going, watching her, having to leave her there. You know, one of the things that I hate, they always had to prick her little her yeah. little ankle. <laughs> I mean, her the back of her foot. Oh, I said, and squeeze. We got to get the Billy Rubin, the Billy. Oh, oh, I hate to see her go through that process when they were squeezing that blood of her, but she's still amazing. She has a lot of energy. You know, they talk about preemies being yeah. so smart, being very intelligent, being very social because we surround them with so, so, so much love. We give them so, so much. And I'm so excited that you uh, are writing about this. You not tell people until you have a premature baby, you will never really understand the great distance between one pane of glass, just standing between that pane of glass and not being able to touch them. So you just reminded me of the beauty of the time. It was, it didn't seem beautiful of going through that process as a family, looking at my daughter 19 years later, who's still small, a, a small package, a lot of energy, but gave her so much love. But her vocabulary, Natalie, was amazing. She's bright. You know, she's is very intelligent, very passionate. So I'm excited about for you and your family. So now how can my listeners get in contact with you if they want to get a copy of the book or if they want to have a conversation with you about the things that you're doing. And then finally, is there anything else you want to share with any NICU families out there? Sure. So um, for the book, you can visit my website. It's MrsNatalieEstelle.com is where you can find the book or um, you can reach out to me on Instagram. And my Instagram is NICU mom self-care co um and i also have a self-care for nikki families um instagram account i'm juggling a lot of the social media i'm old but <laughs> i feel old because this social media stuff is something else but it's a lot um, to manage a <laughs> whole lot to manage it is so i have the two social media pages and then mrs natalie is where you can find the book amazon has a digital version of my book and it has the paperback version of my book and um, you can just reach out to me in any of those platforms. I'm readily available. I'm always on my phone, not next to me, checking emails, um, checking Instagram, trying to juggle that. So anytime you need anything, please let me know. I'd love to get to um, connect with a lot of hospital NICUs. Um, I'm also on LinkedIn. I'm trying to connect with as many people in the NICU as possible because moms need this. Moms need to have that conversation about what you can do for you make sure you're good for your baby when they come home. So I'm available on all those platforms. So please make sure you reach out. I love to talk. So um, please reach out. 
And then um, the last thing for NICU families, I just say, again, please, please advocate for your kids um, and make sure that no matter what, you have a say in what goes on in that NICU. There are many times, um, well, one time when you're talking about the prick, um, Andrea had to have a blood transfusion. I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I couldn't stay in there. I had to go somewhere because it was like they're so tiny and you're pricking them and taking all their blood like that was just a lot for me but I made sure to ask a lot of questions I took a notebook I was consistently writing notes um because I would always come back and check and I would ask them questions oh you said you're going to do this just double checking to make sure you did because I had to be an advocate I had to know what was going on so I learned my Nikki vocabulary because it's a lot of terms it's a lot of terms you have to learn what Brady's are. You have to learn about blood transfusion. You have to learn about um, things that respiratory therapists talk about in terms of their breathing. It's a lot. So if you have a NICU baby, engross yourself in the whole life. Um, learn about the vocabulary. Learn about what you can do for yourself, what you can do for your baby. And just, and just honestly, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I say that because it's very important. Um, prayer works. Fair works. She's doing amazing. She, just like Kadaya, like she she sings. Like I know your Dutch. Kadaya has a beautiful voice. I've heard her <laughs> sing. Andrea is like, I don't know. She's everything. Like she's a gymnast. She's a dancer. She loves to sing. She loves to cook. She's a scientist in her head. Like she does everything. Creamy girls are feisty. I'm gonna tell you. Like it's, <laughs> they're very smart and they're very feisty. Mm -hmm. Whereas my son, who was full term, I didn't talk about him much, but um with him they had to take him out so i had one that couldn't wait to come out <laughs> early this dude's and like i'm not i'm not ready to come out just yet yeah he was you had to go in and get him they had to go get him so i had to have emergency c-section with him which was so not planned um and that in itself was another whole story that's like another podcast <laughs> <laughs> that was, but like <laughs> it's just it was just amazing but creamy girls like you said very smart very, very creamy babies in general. Yeah. Very smart. Um, and don't don't stop them because they, they know what they want. I've, I've found that out. They know exactly what they want and they will work hard to get it. I tell you that. Well, we know you have been working hard as an artist, now as an advocate, as a mom. I wanted you all to check out Natalie Estelle's book, 52 Self-Care Tips for NICU Moms. Treat yourself if you know anybody that's currently in that situation. But one of the things I, that I'm taking away from this interview is be an advocate and fight for your kids. So Natalie, it's a great honor hanging out with you, but you cannot leave yet. The second part of the show is called the Super Bomb Questions. And these are questions that go a little deeper. But the difference between this and the first part is that you need to answer these questions as fully as possible. And you're used to surprises because you got preemie kids. Are you ready? <laughs> I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. All right, here we go. What's your favorite word? My favorite word would be feisty. Okay. I'm, I'm, I guess part of it, she's a, she's a creamy and she's feisty, but I think I'm, I think I'm a little feisty too. Maybe I forgot something. I don't know. <laughs> feisty. We got it. What's your favorite quote, song to a lyric or a Bible verse? Oh, that one's hard because I'm a huge music fan. Um, I don't have a specific quote, but I will tell you, Jill Scott, I swear she's in my head because Everything she says is what I feel. <laughs> so I'm going to say all Jill Scott songs. All Jill Scott. You know, Jill Scott has a new podcast, so check it out if you have not checked it out. I will do that for sure. What's your superpower? Oh, my superpower is I'm a chameleon. Um, my husband has said that before. I, I kind of adapt to any situation. Um, I've been in corporate. I've adapted to that. Being a teacher. Mickey mom, full time mom. Um, I, I I'm a chameleon. Like I, now, I, mind you, I might change my look. I might look different. Next time you see me, I probably look completely different. Um, but I'm definitely can adapt to any situation that I'm put I'm put in. Anything. Okay, chameleon. What moves you to tears of joy? Um, when I see my kids having fun and just watching them and my husband together. Because like I said, we waited to have them. So the fact that we finally had them and I had a boy and a girl, so I was happy about that. I always wanted one of each. Um, 
just seeing them together and 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 doing things together just makes my heart melt. <laughs> what moves you to tears of sorrow? Um, hmm. Losing loved ones. Um, I haven't, knock on wood, I haven't really lost anybody extremely close except for my grandmother most um, recent, especially in the past five years. Um, but I know we did lose um, a close uh, cousin on my husband's side. Um, and that was kind of caught us off guard, but that was hard for me because she was like a sister to me because we've been together for so long. So she was like a sister to him, but she was really like a sister to me as well. Um, so that that brought me, that's probably the last thing that truly brought me to tears because it was kind of What do you wish you had more time to do? This is probably a very random. I have a, I'm like obsessed with food. My husband always gives me, I love food. I wish I had more time. <laughs> So like I know it's really random and crazy, but um You like my good my my god sister Kim, she says, I only like going to the gym because I love food. <laughs> and I don't really like going to the gym. So I so I, I get it. I get it. <laughs> what what if what if you could tell one person you appreciate them, who would it be and why? Um I have so many people, but I guess immediately I would say um my husband because mm-hmm. he Again, we've been together. So uh, we've been together for married for twelve, together for twenty-two, and I know I'm only twenty-five. So, um, <laughs> but um, he has been the biggest support in general. Um, I'm an artist by trade, so I, I, and I said I'm a chameleon. I can adapt, right? I've been through many jobs. That's a whole nother podcast. Okay, <laughs> I've had like at least. I'm a lot. A lot. Since I've been knowing you, you've had a lot. I know. So <laughs> I ain't gonna put the number out there, but I can write a book mm. on that. Um, but I would say he's been my biggest support system. Biggest support system. Um, because most people probably couldn't handle all the job changes. Um, I always have great business ideas, so I'm always trying to start a business um or give people ideas on how to start their own. I'm great with helping people do that. So I would say he's been my biggest support, biggest advocate, and he's an awesome dad. Like, man, he's a, well, a true girl dad. I love, I, I, I love, I love, I love to hear people um, talk about their partners in that way. Final question, Natalie Estelle, if you were in the Miss America talent competition, what would your talent be? Well, since I probably can't bring an ice rink out there, <laughs> um, shout out to all the um, ice skaters. I was a skater for 20 some years. Um, I would guess I, I, I can carry a tune a little bit. I don't I don't share it too often, but I can carry a little bit. I really feel like I'm just that too in my head. <laughs> <laughs> I love her. Like I can harmonize very well. So I did do a song in college with two of my girlfriends. We did sing in, in front of people. That was the first and last time I ever did that. But okay. Yeah, okay. I, I like to carry a tune. Yeah. So you like to carry a tune, but we don't know, but we know she can carry a book. And so right. we want to encourage you because we did the, the song, the album has not come out. But in the meantime, pick up Natalie Estelle's 52 self-care tips for Nick U moms and soon to come as 52 self-care tips for Nick U dads. Natalie, it's been an honor hanging out and talking with you. I miss you and I love you. I'm so proud of the woman that you have become and the mother that you become. Shout out to all of my mothers out there. Happy Mother's Day to all of you. Thank you for Natalie. Thank you for hanging out with me today. Thank you. I appreciate you. i also like to thank my engineer, Alexander Blanc, my super duper producer, Nicole Klimpaka. Happy Mother's Day to you. Supremacy for our theme music and all of you for listening. Make sure you subscribe, leave a comment, stop being stingy and share me with all of your friends. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Leave a comment. If you want to know more more about me, go to drdrlds.com. And as always, believe that something wonderful is about to happen. But some people miss the message because they're too busy looking for the mess. Not you, because you've been listening to Sound Bombing. Peace. The Super Bomb questions are brought to you by Mountain Made CBD. Mountain Made is changing the CBD game by offering a line of high dose CBD tablets at an affordable price. Their products 
are THC free and third party tested for accuracy, cleanliness, and potency. Their products, which ship nationwide, include Build for CBD saturation, Boost for precision titration, and Recover for rest and rehab. With nine years experience in hemp and fitness, Mountain Maid's founders are focused on creating a quality product to help those who live an activated lifestyle. Check out mountainmade.life. Again, that's mountainmade.life to find out more about how their products can help you crush life. Remember, their products ship nationwide. Go check out their website today and follow them on social media at Mountain Made, that's the at symbol, M-N-T-M-A-D-E. Our staff at Sound Balming uses Build before our morning workout, which helps to push our bodies to a whole new level on a daily basis. Try Build, try Boost, try Recover. Our staff is using these products to enhance our active lifestyle naturally, and we are crushing life with Mountain Made CBD, and you can too. Start today by going to mountainmade.life and ordering Build, Boost, Recover, or the multitude of other products that they have which will enhance your lifestyle. I promise you, you won't regret it.